grew up in uh, Hinsdale, Illinois. It's 20 miles southwest of Chicago. So it's uh, my mom, my dad, and then I have two younger brothers. My brother Brian here, who's three years younger than me, and then my youngest brother Matt is five years younger than me. As most kids in Hinsdale, the Allen boys were brought up on sports from a young age, and the passion for athletics in the Allen family didn't stop at Jack and Brian. Yeah, and uh, you know, our family has a long history of sports, you know, just in it. You know, my grandpa and great uncle were both on the uh, Wisconsin Badgers in the 1960 Rose Bowl. Then our father was a, you know, wrestler at Purdue University. Our mom was a volleyball player at uh, UIC in Chicago. And then our uncle also played football and wrestled at Northwestern. The competitive nature instilled in the Allen brothers from an early age continued to motivate them before eventually leading them to the place that helped mold them into the athletes they are today. So uh, this is where it all kind of started. Our dad brought us here when we were younger to give our mom a few hours off from having to deal with us. So our dad wrestled here too. So uh, this is pretty easy for him just to figure out to start bringing us here. So most of our families wrestled here. My uncle wrestled here, him, one of our youngest siblings. Um, it's kind of where we learned toughness, hard work, discipline, things like that, that I don't think you really learn as much from other sports. And it was all pretty much taught right here. You know, since we were little kids, you know, we'd go down to the state tournament, you know. And I just remember going down and watching that, you know, you always wanted to, you know, strive to be a, you know, a state champ, you know, you wrestled to, to be the best. And, um, you know, that's what we worked for since we were little kids. And, uh, you know, that's what uh, we always dreamed of doing. You know, when we finally got here, we uh, I tried to do what we could to get the best of it and, you know, achieve our goals since we were little. It's kind of cool to look back on now because I never really thought about it when I was going through it, but when you come back up here and kind of see your name on the wall, it's kind of surreal, really, because, I don't know, back then, I was just a kid who was having fun playing sports. Jack and Brian's success on the wrestling mat will forever be enshrined in their high school's history. But their work on the gridiron was far from unnoticed. You know, wrestling and football, you know, they correlate pretty strongly. I think the biggest thing we took from it was just the toughness aspect, kind of the, uh, the mental aspect you take from it, just knowing that it's you out there. We kind of, you know, some guys never have been in an individual sport where, you know, it's just them. You lose and it's like, oh, it was so-and-so's fault, but you know, in wrestling, you go out there and get beat up or you lose. There's only one person to blame and that really kind of helps you with the mental toughness and physical toughness, just how you gotta come back no matter what happens and just keep pushing. There were actually multiple practices right here in this corner where uh, me and him actually had to be split up. At the beginning of practice, we were warming up and we got in fist fights right there and we couldn't be partners for the whole day because we would fight in front of all these high school kids or in front of all of our teammates and probably like, Phew. What's wrong with these guys? I thought we were a little different, but <laughs> it's all right, so. A lot of, uh, a lot of family hours in here, a lot of, uh, you know. Tough time, love. Yeah, time spent, devotion, just, you know, wrestling with our dad, you know, our brothers, whatever it is, you know. This is kind of where, uh, you know, everything started for us. Uh, this is our home football field, Dickinson Field. Uh, I always kind of knew that I wanted to play football from when I was a little kid, and this was the place that I kind of had to perform the best to get a chance to play at Michigan State. Um, I wasn't a very highly touted recruit, so I didn't have much offer, so I had to prove myself. But uh, once they offered me and Coach D said I could play there, I fell in love with the place, and I love the staff, and I love everything about Michigan State. Um, for me, you know, going to Michigan State, you know, really the biggest thing was just to play with my brother, you know. I, you know, told people that was really, you know, the only one opportunity that, you know, other schools couldn't offer me that, you know, Michigan State did. So, uh, 
you know, that was pretty special to me, you know, never having the chance to play with them here, you know, to being able to play with them on Saturdays, you know, in college football, it's, uh, it's pretty special. So uh, that's ultimately, you know, why I decided to come to East Lansing. I think, too, it was comforting um, to know that Jack was there. Um, it was harder sending Jack off um, to the school, even though, you know, we like the coaches. and But uh, knowing the coaches more and knowing Jack was there, if Brian needed him, um, it was much easier to send Brian off. And uh, His first day on campus, the way the... Spartans work their locker room. They put kids in lockers numerically based on their jersey numbers. And Jack is 66 and Brian is 65. So Jack kind of checked them into his locker. And as a parent, it was kind of a neat thing to see. And their bedrooms were next to one another at home and now their lockers are next to one another. And the thing is too, it's out of all the years that they've played football, they've never been on the same team. The fact that they are together is huge. I mean, just to see them next to each other on the field and their numbers next to each other is pretty cool because they've never been on the same team before. I mean, except for like wrestling, but not never football. For me, like growing up, I always saw him do things. You know, I saw him win a state title. I wanted to win a state title. I, you know, saw him, you know, be a tough, mean football player that, you know, people feared. And, you know, that's what I wanted to be. So, you know, since then, I've always, you know, tried to be like him. And, you know, he went to Michigan State. And, you know, I wanted to do the same thing, you know, go there, play right away, do all that stuff. And, uh, you know, just uh, being there with him is pretty cool just to, uh, you know, now I'm finally at the same level as him, so I can watch him firsthand, you know, because, you know, when he's gone, I'm going to try to emulate Jack Allen, the center that was there before me, and that's what I've been doing all along, so, uh, you know, it's just uh, special to have him there to be able to see day in and day out, you know, how he works and how he gets better at things, and, you know, it, not just for me, but the whole line room, you know, he really uh, sets a good example for, you know, how you need to work if you want to be successful. Family out, one, one, The opportunity to line up next to your sibling isn't common, especially at the Division I level. But when the paths go on, Jack and Brian lose the title of brothers and simply become teammates. But, uh, you know, just having him next to me, you know, a lot of people think, like, oh, it's so special. In my mind, like, when we're out there, it's sorry, but no. it's just, just another player, really. But, you know, being out there, like, when you get away from the actual game, you know, it's special to have him there. But, uh, you know, when you're in the game, it's with our offensive line, the chemistry we have, it's so, you know, interchangeable with everyone out there. You know, it doesn't really doesn't really matter with how, you know, tight we are and whatnot. So uh, you know, it is cool to have them there. But, uh, you know, our line, we're, you know, we're so uh, interchangeable where we can stick people at different positions where, you know, it's, it's nice to have them out there. You know, he's obviously, you know, a great player to have, makes things a lot easier. But, uh, you know, that's one thing, having them out there. While the Allens don't think about their brotherhood on the field, the gritty blue-collar attitude that Jack and Brian forged on the mats at Hinsdale Central High School is one that MSU offensive line coach Mark Staten quickly took notice of. I, I love coaching offensive linemen who have wrestled because they know how to dig deep. When, they're, when you're out there, sometimes on that offensive line, yes, you're part of five, but truly, you can be alone in what your job is, where you're supposed to go, who you're supposed to get, that's, that's your job. You win or you lose. And that's the same with that wrestling mindset that a number of our linemen have had throughout the years. Now they took it and they won championships with it. Um, they took that resolve to win and mag you know, just magnified it. Because of that, we're better on the offensive line. The Allen brothers bring a nastiness to them. They bring a, we're gonna do anything, everything we can to beat you. And that in itself, it's contagious. It, 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 guys feed off that. They carry the weight. They carry the toughness weight uh, of that offensive line. 
Just uh, to see the O-line work together, you know, and everyone, you know, do their job, not having a, having a guy miss an assignment or anything, just everyone be on the same page and everyone moving forward together. And, you know, when that happens, good things happen. And this year, I just feel that, you know, we have, you know, top five off, like top five guys, the best offensive line in the Big Ten. And I just feel like we're capable of a lot and we have high expectations and, you know, we're going to be held to a higher standard this year because of the guys we have in that room and uh, just uh, that we're capable of a lot and we, we need to work hard and things should be good. With all the goals and aspirations in place for the Spartans offensive line and the hard work and dedication put forth by the MSU team as a whole, the Allens haven't had much time to fully embrace the once in a lifetime opportunity to play side by side with each other. I don't know, right now it's, it's just football, but 25 years down the road, it's definitely gonna be something that, I don't know, you're gonna just be able to sit back and kind of smile on. Yeah, right now we're so like into it. You know, we don't really have time to sit down and kind of look back and, you know, realize what we've done. But, you know, you know right now it's just the season, the season, the season. But, you know, when we're finally done playing, I think the reward will be a lot sweeter than it is now just to be able to look back and say, you know what, we did that, you know, that was us. And uh, it's just pretty cool that it's uh, happened and everything's, you know, gone like this. On February 4th, the Spartans introduced their 2015 recruiting class. On that day, head coach Mark D'Antonio introduced the 22 newest Spartans, a class regarded as one of the best in recent history. I can honestly say that uh, this, this group of people, this group of young people, I don't know if it'll be our best, but you certainly have a great feel for them as, in terms of the type of people that they are. Uh, they are outstanding players. Now they have to just, just start to really define themselves. For some of the newest Spartan student athletes in the highly touted class, the chance to define their role as key contributors for the Spartans have come sooner than others, with a number of true freshmen earning playing time on Saturdays. They'll go to the ground, L.J. Scott, Scott looking for the corner, L.J. Scott, touchdown Michigan State. That's the first touchdown of the freshman's career, and I dare say it will not be the last time he visits the end zone. This year, uh, you know, obviously Grayson Miller and Kari Willis are playing. Um, obviously Andrew Dow is playing, played Tyson Smith this last week, so he's going to be playing more. Uh, L.J. Scott is playing, that's five, you know, so that's what, sort of where we're at. Coming here as a freshman, you know, it's a lot different from high school, obviously, but um, it's like a huge game changer. Um, I actually never thought I would be in a position to be able to uh, come to a D1 school like this, a Big Ten school like this, but it's fun. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun, and um, it's a huge jump. But the game is the game is different. Um, it's a lot faster, and uh, obviously you're playing with a, a lot stronger guy, so it's fun. While it's rare for student athletes to see the field as a freshman, these few young men have fully embraced the challenge and the opportunity to help their team in any way possible. Uh, the main the main thing is just uh, coming in a whole new team, whole new set of guys, and so you just want to earn your place and. My mentality coming in was just trying to earn my way, like special teams, that kind of thing, effort, toughness, that kind of thing. And if you get the respect to the older guys, you'll get the respect to the coaches as well. And that's that's the kind of mentality I had coming in. I was ready. Um, I was just ready for it. Uh, it was a blessing more than anything. But I was definitely ready because I, had, I knew I could compete at that level and be. I felt like I could be successful. So now it was just a matter of just doing it. When my number was caught, uh, I was ready to be what they wanted me to be. It's just a great feeling, even uh, even I try to, even even when there's games where I only play special teams, I just try to make the most of each play and each snap that I get. And my my uh, my expectations for myself is whenever I'm out there to make a contributing play that can later help my team win the game. So um, it's just a, it's a great feeling and then you just try to make the most of it. Only a few members of this impressive group have had their name called on game day but every single member of the class has played an important role within the program. For the guys who aren't playing right now and that are, that are redshirting, they're on scout team, still asked a lot. All these guys have a significant impact in preparing us to play, and we've got to see things game speed if we're going to be good on defense and offense. 
in terms of their responsibility, their responsibilities may not be as mainstream as the guy out on the field, but it's, it's very important in-house. Uh, the rest of our class is doing just as much as we are doing. You know, every single day they're putting in, uh, putting in hours of time, you know, whether it's weight room or, or scout team making us better. Um, I think that go unnoticed. You know, these dudes are very, very talented. You know, if they weren't talented, they wouldn't be here. You know, from the offensive line to the receivers, running backs, CBs, linebackers. I think we have some real good players in our class. Um, I think coaches would agree that uh, they're real good players, and it's just a matter of shaping them, molding them. You know how um, here they develop players very well, and uh, I feel like that our class would be very, very good class. Good evening, everybody, from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, the home of the five-time national champion Nebraska Cornhuskers, a program with a rich, rich tradition, just as the Spartans have. However, this is a dangerous football team. They have nothing to lose and maybe a season to salvage. You know they're going to come out here confident and, and feeling like they have, as we said, nothing to lose and everything to gain. Nebraska has won the toss and deferred. Here is the run-up and the boot. Four wideouts to the right. Gerald Holmes starts in motion left. And they'll hand the ball to Gerald. Off left tackle. Gerald with running room. Gerald Holmes to midfield. Michael Geiger on to try the field goal. A 46-yard attempt. A lot of leg into it. Long enough, and it is good. Michael Geiger comes through with a clutch. The Spartans are on the board at the end of one. Nebraska 10, MSU 3, and the Spartan shotgun on third down and eight. Here's the snap and the Connor Cook throw over the middle, and it's tapped but still caught at the 40-yard line of Nebraska. They trail 10 to three, just under 12 minutes to play first half. Connor Cook has Holmes to his left in the shotgun. The snap, throw softly over the middle. McGarrett Kings with a catch. Nice Starts to his right, cuts back left. He's got running room. He will go all the way inside the five and into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Just like that, we got a tie football game. Shotgun snap to Armstrong, flings it to Allen, makes the catch, but catching him right now is Darian Harris. Spartans back at the Nebraska 48. Connor feeling pressure from the edges, throws over the middle anyway, caught by Aaron Burbridge. Starts his tight end, Paul Lang in motion, right to left. Medium drop, looks left, throws it that way at the goal line, it's caught! McGarrett Kings rolls into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU! The Spartans get the lead back just before halftime. The Spartans will kick off to the Cornhuskers to start the second half. Straight eye behind Armstrong. Toss sweep left to cross, and he dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. And with that, Nebraska gets the lead back in this back and forth football game. AJ Troop in the football game, set to the right. Connor steps back, throws it over the middle. McGarrett Kings with a falling down grab. Holmes to the right of Connor Cook in the shotgun. The snap. The throw over the middle, caught by Aaron Burbridge at the 15, he's at the 10, like a blur, he's at the five, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU! Second and goal, Nebraska at the seven yard line. Armstrong has Newby to his right in the shotgun. Has some time to throw it, picked off at the goal line. Riley Bulla has it, he's out across the 10. Riley Bulla with a big time play. Two tight ends left, Lang and Lyles. Shotgun snap to Connor Cook, play fakes, now fires end zone. Wide open, Jamal Lyles, touchdown, MSU! At the end of three at Lincoln, the Spartans 31, Nebraska 20. Holmes to the right of Connor Cook in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Middle Connor the throws open. it, left side, and oh R.J. Shelton goes up Whoa. and pulls it down at the five. What a play R.J. Shelton just made. Both to the left hash. Hand off to Gerald Holmes, blast off left guard into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU! As Cross is his running back. He'll keep it himself, runs to his left, inside the left pylon, into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. So Nebraska, trailing 38 to 33, will snap it at their own nine yard line. Pressure on the Spartan D. Newby to his left. 
Not a lot of pressure. Throws, it is caught! Oh my! Brandon Riley did catch the ball and take it to the end zone. Jubilation in Lincoln for the Cornhuskers. What a heartbreaking defeat in Lincoln. But the Spartans come out on the short end of this one. 49 or 39 to 38. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to do is congratulate Coach Riley and Nebraska's football team. Uh, outstanding win. Um, just kept playing. Just kept playing throughout the entire game. So uh, with that said, uh, you know, uh, I guess the first thing you got to say to our football team, our football team, is we're going to find out how we bounce on the bottom a little bit. And we bounced along pretty well at the top. And um, we're going to collect ourselves and understand that our destiny is still in our, in our hands. Uh, we control our own fate in terms of winning the East. And that's the main thing that we got to focus on right now. But uh, disappointing in the way it went down at the end for us. But credit them, credit, uh, credit their football team as well.